Going through the scripture reading, lately I've been fascinated with angels, their appearance, what they would do, what they would say, how they would interact with people. Um, they are the representation of God's glory and His power. And that has just been so fascinating, getting the glimpse of God's nature. Uh, we have three men meet Abraham and chat with him before they go down to Sodom and Gomorrah. We have angel hovering between heaven and earth, waiting for David and his men to go down and build an altar and bring the sacrifice for their atonement. So when going through the Gospel of John and uh, reading that part where Mary would get to the tomb for the second time and look inside, uh, I could not help not to wonder what she must have seen. So when launching this project, it instantly became evident to me that significance of Christ's resurrection overshadows any kind of uh, wonder of what those angels might have looked like. To give a quick outline, the whole meaning and purpose of this artwork is that Christ's resurrection proves that His promises of life after death are true and trustworthy. In other words, the emptiness of the tomb represents the fullness of Christ's promises. And what are those promises? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. John chapter 4, 13 through 14 Jesus said to her, the Samaritan woman, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So during his ministry, Jesus was telling people that there is uh, life after death. People believed and his disciples also believed that there would be some form of existence after physical death. However, they did not understand that they would be made alive in the physical, new physical body. Nor did they see it coming that Christ would actually rise from the dead in renewed body. And I'm reading from John chapter 20, 1 through 2. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know uh, where they have laid him. So when she had Seeing this, she went down to the disciples, uh, to Simon Peter and John, and told them that the body has been taken away. Uh, it's missing. They uh, run down to, to that tomb to see it for themselves. Uh, it's recorded in John chapter 20, 6 through 9. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths laying there. And the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not laying with the linen cloths, but folded up in the place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the other disciple, which is John, talking about himself, he goes down into the tomb and he sees something that leads him to believe that Christ actually rose from the dead. Something was in that tomb, something that he saw that clicked right away, that um, Christ's body has been resurrected, has been made alive. So the question is, what did he see?
so I think it would be useful for us to understand a little bit about a ancient burial tradition of the Jewish people. And I'll read from John chapter 19, 39 through 40. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and alloys, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Jesus' body is being taken down and uh, it's being wrapped in these uh, linen cloths. It's a long strip of cloth of linen that's being soaked in this mixture of uh, myrrh, uh, alloy, and spices. Now, myrrh is a tree sap. Uh, it's the tree sap that when it's being cooled down, it solidifies, it turns into resin. So I believe that uh, when Jesus was wrapped in these cloths and was uh, laid there for a period of time, when this mixture had uh, dried and cooled down, it actually solidified, making linen cloth a one piece of a human body cocoon when Jesus' body has resurrected it just disappeared out of it leaving behind this empty body-shaped cocoon of solidified linen cloths just laying there and when John peeked inside of that tomb and saw that he immediately believed that Jesus' body has been just vanished out of it. So it's not just the empty tomb that they have seen early that morning, it's also the empty cloth that testified of Jesus' resurrection. So you might say, hey, you're talking about this empty tomb and empty cloth and well, they laid one man in there and now we're seeing, we're seeing two. How is it empty tomb? Uh, well, uh, it, is, it is empty because uh, it is empty of the one who is expected to be there. Uh, and these two are not. And we can, uh, we can see that in John chapter 20, 11 through 12. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. So this is the artwork of this moment where Mary looked inside and she saw these two angels um, sitting on the, on the slab where Jesus' body uh, had lain. Just before one of them turns to her, looks at her and says, Woman, why are you weeping? And if you continue on reading next few verses, there is something absolutely amazing happens to Mary that morning.